at this point in time, it's been a few months of ownership and I think it is finally appropriate for me to make a review about my experience with the Zenit or Zenit. I'm just going to call it Zenit for the rest of the video because I'm not sure, but the Zenit Marble 40. So this is a huge double kick deck. And if you're finding this video, you probably already know its general specs from different like the manufacturer's website or perhaps Mirascape, things like that. So I'm not going to bore you with the very, very specific details, but the ownership and writing experience for this board is particularly unique in my opinion. It is a huge board and it is heavy. Now for its size, it is pretty lightweight considering it's not that many plies thick and it's got the fiberglass top and bottom. So the board is exceptionally stiff. Um, and pretty thin for its size. However, it still is a lot of heft to kick around and to pop off the ground and to do shovets and things like that. It's got some significant weight behind it. Now, I'm not a dancer and I'm not really a freestyler and I know they tend to use bigger boards. So if you're already used to that, then perhaps this board is gonna feel like a feather to you. So that aside, I really like the feel of the concave of this board. The foot pockets have little micro drops right before the bolts and wheel flares that really have a nice locked in feeling. It's great for sliding, it's great for carving, gives you a lot of leverage over the wheels and the ends of the treks. Now my biggest complaint is with the tails of this board. Now, if I'm not mistaken, on the website Zenit recommends using Paris trucks with this board. And my complaint, and the reason why I'm riding caliber trucks on this board right now, is because the Paris trucks have a wider wheelbase. So the width for, or the length from one wheel to the other on Paris is a little bit wider. And the ride height is a little bit taller as well. So that means that when you go to pop the board, the wheel is farther out and it's farther down. So it's gonna take more distance and more force to bring that board up. Now, the reason I'm running calibers on this board is because they bring in the wheelbase about a half inch more than the Paris, and the base plates make the hanger sit a little bit lower. Now, it may seem like that's not that much of a difference, especially paired with a board of this size, but as a matter of fact, the pop is amazing now. I feel like I can get a fluid and predictable pop out of this board when the tail hits the ground and I can do my ollies um, just like I would any other board and get it nice and level. Whereas on the Paris trucks, I would try to pop and frequently the tail wouldn't even hit the ground. Um, and even if it did hit the ground, the board would be so steep that I wouldn't be able to level it out without accidentally rotating the board one direction or the other and I couldn't depend on this board to pop down gaps or to ollie on top of things. It was extremely unpredictable. With the calibers they make a lot more sense. Additionally, this is a 9 inch board, uh, 9 inch width that is, and that width is consistent through the whole standing platform. Now the tail is about seven and a half, seven inches, uh, but that means that with typical 180 millimeter or 10 inch trucks, the wheels are going to poke out significantly. It's not that big a concern uh, performance wise. You're not really going to notice it unless you have a tendency to kick wheels because your push is really close to the edge of the board. Um, for aesthetic reasons, I would consider, if I were you looking to buy this board, I would consider pairing it with Paris 165s or the caliber nine inch trucks uh, and that is for the simple reason that it keeps your wheels nice and tucked underneath the board i'm running 50 degree calibers because i use this for general cruising light dancing like i said i do tricks kick flips ollies shove it big spins this board is pretty nicely suited for all of that like i said it's a big board so it's got significant amount of heft Sounds like fucking Pac-Man. All right, 
like I said, this board has a surprising amount of heft, so you really have to put a lot of force into rotating the board. And you have to slow your tricks down significantly too. So if you're used to riding perhaps a busted yo face or any deck that is significantly less uh, length and width than this, you're going to notice that you really have to focus on slowing all of your motions down in order to extract the most spin and pop out of this board. So this as of right now is almost my ideal setup for this board. I do have orangutan cages on it. They were the only wheel I had around that seemed appropriate for this board, uh, especially paired with the nine inch caliber trucks. The wheels are incredibly flush to the edges, which is nice for me. It's very visually appealing, but also the nine inch calibers help bring the weight down of the board. So it's been measured before. And despite what most people think, caliber trucks are a little bit lighter than parish trucks of the same length and additionally having the nine inch trucks instead of the 10 inch calibers helps bring the weight down a little more which is huge for me like i said a lot of my enjoyment out of skateboarding and longboarding is popping the board and doing tricks so as light as i can get this the better that being said these wheels are a little chunky a little too big for me they're worn down to 70 millimeters from sliding so if I were to ideally set these up with perfect wheels, they would probably be the 65 or 63 millimeter seismic encores. They've got a slight offset in the rounded lip, so they'll slide really nicely over the ground and they won't catch a lift when you're doing tricks like shove or big spins. That'll cause the board to rotate and it'll give you a little more clearance before getting wheel bite. However, the wheel flares are pretty ample and they will help prevent wheel bite pretty significantly. I would not recommend running risers on any truck setup on this board just because it increases the ride height so much and there is no flush mounting to compensate. It is just uh, mounted to the bottom of the board pretty straight, might I add. Um, but I would not recommend running risers because it will negate the kicktail and basically just continue to make the kicktails less and less and less useful. Additionally, the board features uh, another mounting option you can mount the trucks one space out on either side to bring the wheelbase to approximately 26 inches. I think it's about 25 inches right now, which for me, six foot six, uh, size 13 feet is a really comfortable spread for doing downhill and free ride. I really enjoy the standing platform and the feeling of the drops on this. I haven't done much downhill and free ride on this board. I typically leave that to my Madrid Nessie, which if you're interested in that board, check out my other review for that. Um, but this board I think would be appropriate for free ride and downhill. It has a little bit of flex. It has a tiny bit of torsional flex as well. But overall it's impressively stiff and the concave is really well suited for locking your feet in. The one thing I would suggest is upgrading the stock grip tape. So this is the grip tape added by the manufacturer Zenit. Uh, I think it's just a Jessup clear grip tape and it's all right for cruising it's all right for casual tricks dancing things like that i still am able to slide my feet around and do like 360 body burials while the board is rolling however if you're looking to do downhill and free ride on this board then consider upgrading to like a vicious or a seismic locked on at least where your feet go i wouldn't recommend it on the tail i wouldn't recommend it on the middle save yourself some cash and just put it on the actual standing platform of the board whether you're using it directionally or symmetrically for switch riding as well. Um, other than that, now I have to consider the price because the only reason I bought this board is because I got an incredible deal on the buy sell trade where I purchased this board for 80 US dollars shipped to my location. That's an incredible deal considering the board was unused prior to then, never even mounted, and it was $160 brand new. Now, this could have been a blemished model that uh, sold for a little less brand new, but regardless, it has the performance of a brand new model from my point of ownership. So spending $80 on this board was completely worth it, and I could sell it for more if I wanted to, but I really enjoy this board in my quiver. 
It's really fun to cruise. It's fun to do cross steps and dance and carve really hard on this deck. So I don't see myself selling it anytime soon. But if it were to break and I needed to consider purchasing another longboard, what would I replace it with? Would I buy another one? At $160, I don't think I would. I think that price is just a little too much for this board in particular, especially with the way I'm using it. And I'm noticing that the nose and tail are getting really significant wear. I'm starting to see signs of razor tail. Now, the tail is not razored, but now that I have it set up with caliber tracks and I feel like I'm going to be popping the board a lot more and a lot more strongly, I think that razor tail is going to keep continuing to creep up and creep up to the point where I might even consider getting aftermarket like Powell tailbones to uh, further protect the tail of the board. However, that would change the pop. Whatever. That aside, I don't think this board is worth $160. I think that's insane. Um, instead, I would probably price this closer to a Bust and Shrike, even though I know this has more technology. It's got the great common cave, it's got really complex concave and rocker mixed and the micro drop. It has the great fiberglass that enables it to have less plies of wood to keep the board very stiff. Um, but overall, I just can't justify that price for this piece of wood. I would much rather buy a Bustin Strike, which I think is a better all-around board for taking to a skate park or downhill free ride dancing. I think the Boston Trike is a much better purchase than the Zen and Marble 40. Unless you are looking for a really stylish, cool board that when set up with caliber trucks, which is not everybody's taste, but in my short rider experience with this board, I think is a really nice fit. When set up with caliber trucks, is just as usable as the Boston Trike. I'm going to try to get some clips of me riding it this afternoon, um, but also I will have a lot of clips of my previous time riding this board on Parrish trucks, on even Randall 150mm trucks. That's something you shouldn't do. Uh, 150s are just too thin for this board. It doesn't make an awful lot of sense. Definitely stick around the 160-170mm to 170 range. So that's the 9-inch calibers or the 165mm Paris. Yeah, despite my several complaints of this board and its pricing, I have absolutely loved owning this board. All of my friends love riding this board. They love to take it out. I've taught many people to skate on this board. It has been treating me fantastically, although it has been a challenge to find a really appropriate setup, and I think I've finally gotten most of the way there with the caliber trucks and these center set orangutans. Still, I think I can remove weight by getting seismic encores with the large core and uh, probably the lighter urethane. Um, and that'll just increase this board's maneuverability. But overall, I've had a really good time. So if you're dead set on this board and if you are absolutely in love with the style and the simplicity of the graphic and just the beautiful white uh, triaxial fiberglass weave with the marbling that's unique to every single board, and you think Zenit is just a cool company putting cool products out there, um, then this board is definitely worth it and it will evoke those emotions from you. But if you're just looking for an all-around board to really do it all, I would get the bust and strike over this and worry less about damaging it. Yeah. <laughs>